This is the Art Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the Amazon best-selling book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. In the Marketing Minute, we answer your questions to help your art career. Brought to you by artmarketing.com, the place to go to learn more about marketing. Now, here's your host, art magazine publisher, Eric Rhodes. Thank you, Jim Kipping, and thank you for joining us today. I am here, my goal is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist. So let's get right to today's questions. Here's a question from Barbara H. of Suffolk, Virginia. My art is selling and I'm becoming better known in the art world. When is it time for me to quit my day job and go into art full time? Oh, well, I I did a product. I don't mean to hype you on a product here, but I did a product, how to quit your job and become a successful full time artist. And I go into about three hours of depth and how to do that, and and what the timing should be. And basically, the idea is you want to have this overlap. You want to get to the point where you're consistently replacing close to your or maybe all of your other income as a part-time artist, or at least having the confidence that you're about to get there. Because starting out, you know, you're going to have to spend some money on marketing, and it's better to spend that money on marketing when you've got a job and you've got some extra income. You've got to have to build yourself up. You've got to make sure that you're working all the, all the different angles. By the way, I, I'm going to talk at the Plein Air Convention about a guy I met uh, recently, had lunch with um, just a few weeks ago, uh, who is making $5 million as an artist. And it's a great story. And he does everything the opposite of everything everybody else does. And I'm going to tell that story on stage in Art Marketing Bootcamp because it's so interesting and I learned so much from him and how he built his business to $5 million. This is a guy, an artist, and $5 million. I mean, you know, he's rolling in it. This guy is rich. So anyway, not that it's all about being rich, but it never hurts, right? So, um, you know, if your work's being represented by a gallery uh, or you lost a gallery, maybe you can get the gallery person to give you a recommendation or a letter or something if you have to switch que- galleries. The other thing is you never want to have all your eggs in one basket because uh, if you're in one gallery and they go away, guess what happens to you? Now you're scrambling, and now, now you're going to have weeks, months without any sales until you get somebody, until you get them up to speed, until they can market you and get their people familiar with you. So I like to have three. I think three is a nice manageable number. You can have more than that, but not too much more. Some people do four or five, but it depends on how much work you can produce and how much quality work you can produce. So you want to have a couple so you have some security. And, you know, if you want to get into galleries, then, well, uh, the best way to do it is to get invited in. That means they need to invite you. That's not you calling them because, you know, there's a sense of begging. And by the way, galleries get dozens, sometimes hundreds of calls and emails and packages and they just kind of get sick of it so you want them to reach out to you and I have a lot of strategies in my book and some other places in my videos that where I talk about how to get them to reach out to you so um, one of the ways to get them to reach out to you is to get referred in so find other artists who are in the gallery and talk to them and get to know them and then maybe at some point once you're comfortable with that ask them if they'd make a recommendation and they oftentimes will next question is from sandy in colorado hi sandy all right so one day we got to figure out how to get these people to actually call in and do it like a talk show and then i'll i'll be able to interact with them that'd be more fun anyway sandy says i've been in a series of local galleries that have closed what is the best way to approach major established galleries? I think I just answered that question in the, the above. Uh, but, you know, you got to get references. You got to get invited in. You got to ask the owner of the gallery to contact people who purchased your artwork. You know, if, you, if a gallery goes out of business, at least you could do is see if they'll possibly give you the list of people who bought your artwork so you can contact them direct or give them to another gallery. Um, and I like to have the galleries give me the names I have an agreement with them as I'll never approach them or I'll never violate the agreement with the gallery, but I like to send them a thank you card. And so they'll, uh, they'll send me the note and say, you know, I'll write a note to them and, and send it on. And and then I have the address and I'm not going to ever do anything with it until the uh, gallery goes out of business. And I don't anticipate my gallery going out of business, knock wood. But anyway, I think that uh, it's a good practice. And you also want to put your website and stuff on the back of the on the, uh, uh, the panel and burn it in there with a wood burner so it doesn't get uh, covered up. And that way people can kind of go to your thing, get your newsletter, get on your list and stuff like that. So I hope that helps. 
And uh, anyway, I wish you luck, Sandy, in Colorado. Well, this has been the Art Marketing Minute with me, Eric Rhodes. My goal in life is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist and to help your dreams actually come true. So if you want to submit questions, simply email eric at artmarketing.com. And to learn more about marketing ideas, you can visit artmarketing.com. Thanks for listening.